In this screencast, we're going to take a look at map views in Android. We're going to go over the basics of how map views are put together. We're going to take a look at a geocoder class, which lets us translate address to location, addresses to locations on the map, as well as taking lat longs and translating them to addresses and so forth. And finally, we're going to add a simple overlay to the map. We're going to drop a pin on a location. So let's take a look at map view and how it works. And we'll start out by looking at a layout that includes a map view. So I have a, a layout here, a linear layout. And all I'm going to do is fill the entire screen with a map view. So I've got a map view element defined here. And notice how I do this. This is now a view that's coming out of that Google external maps library. So I've got a fully qualified name here. So I got com.google.android.maps.mapview. And at that point, everything is kind of usual. So I've got an ID, I'm going to fill parent on the uh, width and height, and I've got a few other attributes, and there's more that you can play with, so I'm going to make it's enabled, and it's going to be clickable. So if people click on this map view, I want to be able to capture those events and, and do something with them, make the map interactive. And then the last thing you see here is my uh, API key. So I went ahead and I followed that process that I just had up on the view graphs and I used my developer certificate um, and uh, generated myself an API key. And incidentally, if you happen to reinstall Eclipse along the way, maybe you want to upgrade or you've got problems so you wipe your old version and install a new one, when you run it the first time, that new installation, it's going to create a new developer certificate for you so you're gonna have to go back and repeat that process. Okay, so that that's something else that sometimes will mystify you. You're like, this was working yesterday, and now my maps aren't displaying. What's going on? You forgot you actually reinstalled Eclipse. Okay, so anytime you reinstall Eclipse, it's gonna create a new developer certificate. Um, so so that's the uh, the API key, and of course, when I go to deploy, I'm not gonna deploy this app, but if I did deploy this application, I would have to go back and change this to use the API key that I generated with my deployment certificate. So that's the layout. No surprises there. And let's look at the code. So the first thing you'll note is I've extended map activity. So instead of extending just activity, I'm extending extending a class that's in the Google external maps library called map activity so that's going to give me a bunch of map stuff by default and as we move on inside our on create the first thing I do is set my content view just like always then I go and I get myself a reference to that map view object and one of the things that's associated with a map view is a map controller. And the map controller is what lets me control a lot of aspects of the map view. So what default controls show up on the map. So on, on maps, sometimes you'll have a zoom in, zoom out type functionality. And there's little zoom in, zoom out buttons and, and so forth. So there's those types of things. Um, I might want to have a default zoom level. Okay, So instead of coming up on the whole world, I might want to set it so it comes in at a certain level of detail. And so that's what I'm doing right here. I'm saying I want zoom controls displayed, and I want to set my zoom level to 18. And I believe it goes 1 through, uh, I think, 21. Yes. Okay, so if you do 1, you're going to see the whole world. If you do 21, you're going down to the lowest, the highest, I guess the lowest resolution in terms of, you know, the, the 
the closest tiles that Google has available. And you've all experienced this on Google Maps where if you zoom too far, it tells you there's no data available anymore, right? You see kind of because, or actually I think that's on the satellite images. On the uh, street view, I think it just stops when it gets to the lowest level, okay? So if you set it to 21, you're going to be zoomed in as close as, as possible. Then what I'm doing here is I'm just demonstrating that geocoder class that we talked about a few minutes ago. And what I want to do is I want to simply drop a pin on the map given an address. Okay, so that's what I'm doing in my demonstration code here. And so one of the things I need to do before I can do that is I need to take the address and I need to translate it into lat longs. So that's what I'm using geocoder for. And right now, you obviously wouldn't do this in a real app, but I've hard-coded a address string, and in this case, it's the Allendale campus. And I'm asking my geocoder, can you, um, you know, get me a uh, list of address, uh, a list of points or addresses around this name? And I'm going to set it to one. Okay, so I want to get the closest address to this, and it's basically going to be a address for this particular location. And if I did in fact get something, and I'm going to here because I know that that query will return something, um, then I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new geo point. It's a rep representation of a position or a point on the map. And I simply ask that first address in the set that comes back. It'll actually be the only address because I only asked for one. And I'm going to get its latitude, but the geo point constructor um, expects these in, in micro degrees. So I'm going to multiply it by 1e6, which is just you know, 1 followed by 6 zeros in, in scientific notation here. So that's how I translate. Now I've got this geo point, and I'm storing this as my location, which is just a member variable right here. Okay, probably should make that private. All right, and that's it. And if I get exceptions, you know, I would get exceptions here if I forgot to tell my application that I needed internet access, or if um, I wasn't using the um, Actually, I don't think this one uses the map view key. Maybe it does. I'm not sure. Uh, but if I didn't have network service, that would be another example. If I was out of service coverage, it wouldn't be able to do this translation because it has to go off to the network to do this translation. Um, and, and if that happened, I'm just going to do a stack trace. Um, then I go and I say, all right, if I got a location, so if that string that I gave it translated back into a real location, then what I want to do is I want the map to kind of swing over to pan over to that position. So the map's going to come up and it's going to then search for this location and then it's going to position, move the map over so it's positioned at the zoom level I specified on that location. Now. That's what gets my map up and displayed kind of on the area of interest. Okay, so my point should be kind of centered right, right in the middle of the map. Okay, but now what I want to do is I want to actually annotate that map. Okay, I want to have something dropped onto the map. In this case, I'm, I'm going to put a pin on the map. But I also want to do something else. I want to make it interactive. So if I actually click on the map, I want, some, I want it to do something when I click. Okay. In my, in my demo code, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the lat long of where you clicked and I'm just going to print it up in a toast just to show you I can capture an input event. Okay? In a real app, obviously, we might want to do a lot more than that, but just to show you how I can register for click events. So what I need to do in order to add this location marker is I need to create um, a map overlay. And I can have an arbitrary number of these, these overlays. And to create a map overlay, you need to um, create a new class and inherit 
this overlay base class that is defined in the Google external maps library. So here nested inside my location activity I've got a class called map overlay and I'm extending the uh, the Google overlay class and what I can do now in this overlay is I can actually specify uh, event handlers and I can also put annotations so they're going to actually call me okay so now it's almost like a graphics uh, GUI here they're gonna call me they're gonna give me a canvas that I can draw on and when I draw on that canvas it's basically going to be superimposed on the uh, the map so what I'm gonna do in my draw method here is first I'm gonna just check and make sure I got a location because I, if I don't have a location some of the calculations and so forth here are gonna be goofy and I'm going to I need to get the actual points on the screen but remember now this is this is relative so I've got a physical map that's kind of panning and then I've got a viewport on that map that I'm looking into and I want to know where to draw it on the current screen and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to feed it my location and I'm gonna say give me the actual screen points for that location and the screen points are where I want to draw my annotation so this step here takes the geo point and tells me where on the screen I need to draw to have it show up on that part of the map. Once I've done that, now all I need to do is the actual draw operation. And so I'm going to draw a bitmap, and what I've did a priori here is I just went off and found a nice marker image, okay, and I dragged it over to my resources directory. So if we go into my MDI and look at Okay, it's maybe kind of hard to see, but um, it's a PNG, and one of the things to notice is that it's got a transparent background. Okay, so when you put something on the map, if you if you want it to look nice, you want this thing, you want to use a PNG or a GIF with a transparent background, because otherwise it's going to be a square block, okay, and it's going to look funny. With a transparent background, everything that's transparent here the actual map surface is going to show there okay so kind of this is just like stuff you do when you do web development right so that's my pin and I drag that to my resource directory and I can now load that up by using this bitmap factory class and I can decode the resource simply by giving it the ID and it gives me a bitmap back and once I got the bitmap that canvas that I was passed has a draw bitmap method and I can pass to it the bitmap and then the XY of where I want that to go now on the Y you'll notice I minused 150 okay well I'm sorry 50 that 50 is actually the height and what I want it to do is I want the pin to be right on the location if I draw without taking the 50 off it's actually that the pin is going to be drawing the top of the pin is going to be on the location so my pins gonna be off by 50 see what I'm saying so I'm just taking the height of the pin off so when it draws the bottom of the pin is actually right on the the point on the map okay so if I had a marker that was 150 tall I would actually subtract 150 at this point okay so that's gonna draw that pin you know right on the geo point associated with the address I gave it but that's just kind of where I'm setting up the draw I still have to hook it in to the controller and we'll look at that in a second but before we do one more thing is if somebody taps on the map I want to be able to respond to that and so what I can do in my overlay is I can override various event handling um, um, methods and so I did a tap so that would be just a you know if somebody taps the screen and all I'm gonna do here is a make text or I, I'm sorry a toast I'm gonna put a toast up on the bottom of the screen and I just wanna print out 
the lat long on the area of the mat that they touch, just to show you it's interactive. And so one of the things the um, on tap gives me is the actual point that was tapped. So when you touch, you know, it's going to basically figure out the center of gravity of that touch and it's going to give you that back as a point. And so what I can do is print that um, up on the screen and, and, and say, okay, this is the lat long. It's not very useful, but it, it shows you that I'm actually interacting. And as I touch in different places, you'll see that number actually changing. So that's my overlay object. And I can create as many of these as I want. Okay, So I can have different overlays. I can have different event handlers. And by the way, when an overlay handles an event, it's going to return true. If it doesn't handle it, by default, it's going to return false. Okay, So let's go back and look at how we wire that overlay. So here's where I create my overlay object. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask my view for its list of overlays. So every map view object has um, a list of overlay objects that it maintains. And I can get a reference back to that by calling get overlays. What I'm going to do is just clear it, make sure there's nothing in there, because I only want one of these. And then I'm going to simply go ahead and add that overlay that I just created. Okay. I could add more here if I wanted, but in this demo I'm just doing one of them. And then I want to, I've changed the map, I want to force this thing to redraw itself. So I'm going to call mapView.invalidate, and that's going to basically force it to draw. And one of the things it does is, in addition to grabbing the tiles, moving to that address, grabbing the tiles and rendering them, it's going to go through its stack of overlays, and it's going to render those. Call the draw methods on all of those as well. Okay? So that's what it does. Now let's take a look at, we looked at the layout. Let's look at the manifest. Um, there's a couple things we need to do when we're doing map view in the manifest. The first thing we have to do is the same thing we did with web view previously. We have to tell uh, Android that this application is going to use the internet and it's using the internet to get the tiles as well as to do the resolution from addresses to lat longs and vice versa. Okay, So I have to use the internet so that's one of the things I have to declare here and then secondly inside the application element I have to put a uses library element with the attribute name to com google android maps. I have to tell it I'm using the Android maps. Okay? And that's important because if a device came along and tried to install it that doesn't happen to have that install available, okay, you wouldn't want that to install. You'd actually want to flag it and, and, and tell the user. So here we're declaring, okay, we're not just plain Android here, but we're actually using this Google um, add-on. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty standard here. So let's go ahead and run this guy. Okay, so I got my pin right on that address that I gave it, and uh, map is zoomed in at level 18, and if I click, prints the lat long out.